There are several different types of ways that you can build a bridge across a river. The thing that's really unique about this one is it's going to uh, basically grow out of the water, a little bit like a tree. Uh, we'll start with, we'll start with uh, drilling some holes down, get down to bedrock. Uh, at this point, uh, we'll, we'll bring up up here with some footings, and then what's going to happen is we're going to do a thing called can balanced cantilever construction. So here's, here's what happens. We go, uh, it's basically going to evolve like a tree. First, we've got to get something down in the water to hold the whole thing up. And so right now what we're doing is we're drilling down, getting to the bedrock that actually started pouring at this point. And uh, we'll build up the piers from there. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have, it's called balanced cantilever construction. It's really fascinating. What, it's kind of the shape of a T. We'll get to the top of that pier, and then we're going to spread out from the center and go both directions and just hover out over the water. And uh, then we'll do the same thing uh, a little further into the river with another pier. And these two pieces of bridge will grow together and they'll also grow towards the sides of the bank. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting form of bridge construction. Uh, there's some forms of it in Germany. It's become more popular in the United States. But uh, it'll be a fascinating process to watch because you'll see the bridge extending out hundreds of feet with nothing underneath it. You know, one of the interesting things about the way this bridge will be put together is the actual apparatus they use to build it. It's called a form traveler. And as the bridge emerges from that pier and from the center and starts to, starts to go out in both directions, you'll have a piece of equipment called a form traveler. And uh, it's able to, to skirt back and forth among the bridge. But they'll, they'll build this balance. So they'll build one segment and the other segment as it grows out. And uh, so it's, it's a sense of, it's a machine that basically sits on the construction, on the deck of this bridge as it goes out, as we pour those forms and it works its way outwards. People will want to see that, it's, it's interesting. This is a unique project because it's called a cast-in-place concrete segmental bridge. And what that means is that we take a box girder, it's basically a trapezoid shape, and we'll pour the cement in place one piece at a time. So we'll pour a block, and it's hollow inside, pour a block, and make this box and then there'll be another box just beyond that and then we add that on and another box beyond that and then what we've got is we've got basically tendons a cable system that runs back and forth through these box girders and compresses and compresses them together the combination of, of the, the concrete structure and the compression by those cables creates the structure it's, it's really fast a fascinating process one of the main reasons uh, that we looked at something like this was because of the sensitive nature of this area. Uh, we know that local people here are very concerned about tourism, obviously. Uh, that's one of the mainstays of your economy. Another thing that we're looking at is we're dealing with the Colorado River, one of the fundamental tributaries that we have headed to the Pacific Ocean, and of course a lot of people downstream use that river. Uh, and so there's a number of things that we're balancing with this construction. Uh, we also recognize that there were some safety issues. For instance, we've got the, the uh, pedestrian bridge, which has already been built. You know, but prior to this type of construction, we were dealing with people that want to take a look at this beautiful scenery around us, stopping on the bridge, taking photographs, those types of things that cr can create some problems. And so by doing it this way, we'll be able to tie in a little bit better with the environment. Uh, I think you'll love the, the final look of the bridge. Local people selected the actual aesthetics, the colors, which will match your surroundings here. Uh, we'll have what's called form liners that give a special texture. Well, this, this, is, a, this is a state project, UDOT is, uh, is helping with this. Project is valued at about $38.5 million. FIG Engineering is basically the designer for the bridge. And their office is in Denver right now, the, the office that we're dealing with. And basically, they just specialize in bridges. They're one of the few firms uh, in the country that does complete bridges, and they've got a lot of special work out there that, that they've done that's, that's similar to what you're seeing here. Uh, another one of the uh, players is H.W. Lochner Engineering. They'll be taking a look at the roadway construction, and uh, we'll be doing some things like tying in bike trails that will go underneath the bridge and tie into the existing trail system here, and that should make it a lot better for recreation and, and for local people that need to transverse back and forth across US 191. The general contractor for this project is Wadsworth Brothers Construction. Uh, they're based out of Salt Lake City. They've done a lot of uh, major projects around the state of Utah. And construction is expected to take place in two years. That's what our contract was. We started, of course, early spring this year. What we expect to see, if all goes according to plan, is that uh, this year we would see 
one bridge structure cross the river. That would be on the west side of where the existing bridge is. Once that structure's in, then during the winter months, we hope to tear down the existing bridge and then hopefully restart the whole cycle again come spring. And at that point, we construct the east bridge and, uh, and then we'll move traffic onto both structures.